Hey guys, so lately we've been getting a lot of uh, requests uh, for doing a VFX trail and this is gonna be a like a quick uh, tutorial to teach you how how this one it's done uh, as you can see it's a, a tutorialing one right tutorialing one or two materials in one so if we go to the uh, to the to the emitter to the to the cascade uh, emitter it is two two materials two trails right so first let's start making the first material so uh, actually this one so the idea behind this material is that we want to have a texture in this case this kind of flare flurry texture and that's going to be the main center of our material, right? We want to have this flare and we want to distort its UVs so you can see this, this wavy effect, right? If we disconnect everything here, you can see that it's just the, it's just the wave texture, right? It, it's a flare. All right, so let's just hook it back up. So what I did here was just get two noise textures it, it, it could be anything honestly that you want i chose this one and i just rotated them each on a different direction of course then you multiply them by 0.1 and minus 0.1 you add them together and you add it to a text to a texture coordinate, uh, coordinate right if you just add it like this you can see how it is working, right? It is just one noise panning left, the other noise panning right at different speeds, right? And on itself, this this looks fine, honestly. Uh, but I wanted to go one step uh, beyond and maybe add a little bit more of a little bit bit more more of detail. So what I did at the end, let's just uh, disconnect this one. What I did at the end was add these two noises to another kind of noise. And this noise is just, uh, it's it's the same noise, but it is panning, right? It is just going uh, from right to left, right? The, the top ones are rotating and the two at the bottom are panning at a different speed, right? So again, the noise, it's panning and it's been multiplied by point minus 0.1 and this one again minus 0.1 and they're both being added right added to each other and then at the end it's being added here next to a texture coordinate right and that's like if we preview it that's everything so far right it is one texture rotating one side the other to the other side a panning texture for each side it creates this this wavy effect so that's it for the uv distortion and what is next is just um, really common right uh, we are multiplying our texture by a scalar parameter uh, and by doing this this allows us to modify it on a on a material instance uh, so yeah, um, this uh, if, if you modify this one, you're increasing the texture power. If you put zero, nothing is going to is going to render for the for the music, right? What is showing is just the opacity. So if you put one, it's the normal texture. If you put two, it is a slightly more intense color on the texture, right? So two is fine. And then we're doing the same, right? For power, modifying its texture density. If we go for two, you can see it is brighter and tighter, right? So we'll, we'll just go with one, one is fine. And after we are done with this power, we're just multiplying it by a particle color so we can modify it on Cascade or Niagara or whatever you wanna use, right? Uh, yeah, particle color being multiplied by it hooked on emissive, then the same thing for the alpha, we multiply it here. Uh, for the opacity, we're just using a normal radial gradient, 
right? Um, this allows us to, without using, using a texture, just make a circle. So we see no edges. Without this, you can see some edges on the sides, right? Maybe we don't want this at all. Well, in my case, I, I do not want it. Uh, so I just hook this up. We could also create scalar parameters for the radius and the density, but since I find this is fine, it's at the end up to you, right? This depth fade is useful. So whenever your uh, your particle or your or your material intersects some kind of uh, geometry, you don't see that uh, that thick, uh, a sharp um, line, you know. I can actually show you that in a little bit, but um, yeah, and then uh, at the end, we're just multiplying this texture by, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, we are just uh, powering this texture again, just for the alpha. And that's the, that's the material. It is quite simple. Um, it is quite simple. Uh, basically, for this one, since I don't think I explained it well, every uh, material that is translucent or additive should have this this depth fade. So whenever it intersects another uh, object in the in the map, you don't see a, a sharp line, but you you see like a a small blur that you can actually configure right with this distance default. So this is the first material, and if you want to see it, it's this one. Let's isolate it. Let's just put this up a little bit. It's just this one. And uh, if you want to go back to the cascade editor, it is just uh, green at the start. It has a highlight on point three. On point four, it just changes. And th this is a little bit too abrupt. So you may want to modify it so it is softer, right? You just see how it, it changes so so strongly and then for the second material it is very similar to the first uh, for this, uh, to the first one that we did let's just erase this <laughs> uh so again it is the same right it is one texture it can be any noise it's this one for me in my case uh, oh sorry okay yeah so it can be any texture that, that you want this is how it's looking and again, I'm just adding two textures so that are rotating, two that are panning, and they're added together. And it is the same procedure, right? Texture power, density, alpha density, gradient, but there is just one modification, and that is that I added this texture on the opacity. And my reasoning for this is this texture. My reasoning for this is that I, I wanted uh, I wanted this one to be uh, thinner compared to the other one. So when we add them together, uh, you can see a, a clear difference, right? Like this. You can see one full texture and the other one that is uh, smaller and they have different colors and different timings, right? This is why I, I chose something different here. Um, again, right, it is the depth fade multiply with the gradient, everything's fine here. It is very similar to the to the first material. And the way that you set it up on, on Cascade or on Niagara if you want to, because the setup should be fairly similar, is that the anim trail, you want it to be, the distance you want it to be one, uh, because whenever you create a new, new meter and you go here and you go for anim trail data it's going to be 10 and this is not going to render too well uh the, the quality is not going to be too high so you want this on one and then you want a spawn per unit and this spawn per unit you want it exactly like this one one it is more costly but it looks just way better like i don't think that you can make a trail without it being this. So movement tolerance 0.1, or well, a, a good looking one, of course, right? 
uh, you have the color, you can have a, a different location if you so desire. The size doesn't matter, lifetime is 0.5, spawn is nothing since we're using spawn per unit. And in local space, everything's the same, right? So you just right click on the notifies and you put trail and then you hook your particle and you select two bones, right? I have here plenty of bones to experiment <laughs> with things. So for example, um, my weapon is on the right hand. So I just go for hand R, right click, add socket, and you just add the new one, right? You rename it and you need to set it up on, on whatever location that you want, right? For example, mine are one at the handle, the two is on the tip, the three is just slightly skewed to the side, and so on, right? However you want it. FX4 is usually for sparks. It is however you want it. Mine is from one to seven, and seven is on... Okay, so it, it is way past the tip, but that's, that gives it that, uh, that huge, uh, huge arc, right? So let's say this is a really quick overall, but if you want a more detailed uh, tutorial, do ask and I'll make it, right? Maybe this is good enough for you, uh, maybe not. So do let me know, right? The materials are really simple. Um, well, that's it. I really hope that you enjoyed it and that it was useful. Let me know again if you want something more complex. I'll see you on the next one.